It needs that signal. We need more power. You guys know already you signed up. That's Micah Solasan. That's right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, made his debut in anime as Malik Werner in Glass Rider. Uh, has done voice acting for anime in most well known as Soul Evans and yes. Soul Eater. Uh, also roles in dozens of others from Sergeant Frog to Wolf Children to Space Dandy to Kamasana Kiss. Uh, also does some video game voice work I saw. Yep. And he's an artist as well, professional freelance artist, and does commissions and stuff, though probably don't hit him up for a commission here today. No, because I'll hit you. <laughs> <laughs> so now I open the floor up to questions, so who's first? Don't all rush. I always have. I'll start. Please, sir. Could you tell me how you got started? No. I'm oh, there you oh. go. That's all I got. <laughs> um, uh, do, do you want the, the full version or the live? Because uh, I guarantee you the like... lie is much more entertaining. <laughs> okay, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the full version, okay. and then I'll tell you the lie afterwards. Um, I got started, I was in college at the time. I already had an interest in acting. Uh, I did some stage from middle school to high school. Um, and, uh, and around that time I got into anime as well, and discovered voice acting through like uh, Voice123, uh, online sites like that, um, where you do indie, uh, like indie game projects, smaller uh, you know, not like high paying gigs, but just smaller paying gigs. Um, and then someone told me uh, about Funimation's website where they were accepting voice demos for actors. And I thought, well, I, I could probably do that. And the requirements were simple. You know, you needed to be 18 and over, which I was. Um, and uh, you needed to be local in the Dallas area, which I wasn't. I was living in Hawaii at the time. <laughs> Very far away from Texas. Um, uh, I definitely told myself, well, I mean, if it came to it, I don't think I'd move to Texas. Stupid past me. Um, but uh, I, I made a voice demo, I sent it in, didn't expect anything, thought, you know, what are the chances someone like me in the middle of nowhere will get called by Funimation? Lo and behold, someone from Funimation contacts me and says, hey, uh, can, you, uh, can you come in an audition for us? Uh, you, you seem like you have potential, we'd like to try you out. And uh, I thought, this clearly has to be a joke. There's no way this can be real. Um, but it ended up being real. Uh, the, the problem was I wasn't local, so they couldn't promise me any work. So I, I uh, discussed it with my, my friends and my family, and they said, hey, if you're ever in the area, call us and maybe we can make something happen. Uh, and, but until then, we can't give you anything. Um, I had some gradu graduation money left over from a uh, from high school, so I took a trip to Texas for about a week. I contacted them and said, hey, I'm going to be in the area for about a week. Uh, if you need me, please let me know. And so we scheduled a few sessions, and uh, at, after my last session, um, just doing small bit parts, crowd noises, and things like that. After my last session, my director uh, told me, hey, so uh, when do you plan on coming back? And I thought, ha! Oh, you're serious. Um, I don't think I could make that move. I, I, I didn't think I could. Uh, after the, the third session, I thought, this is really cool, but this is like a bucket list thing. You know, I check it off and it's done. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. And she said, well, if you think about it more seriously, uh, I think you could do well here. Just think about it. And so I said, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I left. Um, the day I got back from Texas, I got a call from Funimation again saying, hey, a couple of other directors want to, to see what you can do to work with you. Uh, when are you available? One thing led to another, I ended up moving to Texas, and became a voice actor. Wow. So you went from paradise to Texas. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> Even though Texans tell me, Texas is paradise, God's paradise on earth. I'm from God's paradise. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what. <laughs> um, the lie is that Todd Haverkorn stole my parents, and I'm paying off the ransom at Funimation. <laughs> See, isn't that shorter and more fun? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Every time. I, play, I played uh, two characters in Subject Frog. Um, one was this character who looked like me. He had a ponytail. And so they were like, well, who do we know that has a ponytail and can sound like a young male? Oh, Micah, of course. So that's how I got that character. Um, the second time is, I think, two seasons later, uh, I play a character who's like an alien chef. They have an iron chef. Oh, back. oh, yeah, oh, oh, that's you? Yeah. Wow, that's well, amazing. It's, 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 
Donald actually, the fanboy. <laughs> it's me and my fiance. We play the twin aliens. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, because the director's like, I love casting you two as twins. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how we got that one. It's super but, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Sergeant Frog. It's a shame we couldn't <clears throat> get more. Yeah. I love that series. Though. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rail Deck series was an interesting one. Um, we started the first season in 2010, 2011. Um, uh, we only had the first season, so it was just sort of like a one-shot thing. I was cast as the main character, and uh, and we just did it. It was just one of those shows, like everything else. Um, personally, I wasn't happy with my performance in it, so I always wished that I had a second chance at it. And lo and behold, about two or three years later, uh, we get the second season of Index and Railgun S. Um, personally, Railgun S, who has seen, anyone see the uh, A Certain Magical Index or franchise or whatever? <laughs> Railgun S is my personal favorite franchise because the storytelling was so spectacular. The animation was wonderful. Um, and it has some of my favorite scenes in it um, as Toma. Uh, and then we did the movie shortly after that. But we did all of that sort of in one go. The uh, Railgun S season two and the movie. And that took about six months of last year. From about January to June, we worked on Index nonstop. And I, I grew to really like Toma. What was the like? What was the premise around the entire series? Like, what 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 motivated the, the creation of that series? Do you do you know? Uh, I do not know. All I know is that it is based on a light novel series in Japan, um, and that uh, the anime follows it up until a certain point. The movie is written by the light novel author, mm -hmm. but is not actual part of the canon. Okay. Um, uh, that and apparently it was recently the tenth anniversary. Oh. of the light novel series, so that was really cool. Yeah. Another question? I'm a nerd. <laughs> I was into anime uh, when I when I got into acting around the same time, and so uh, there was one show in particular, um, Codebreaker, where I read the manga before the anime was ever made. It was one of those things where the manga came out in the States, and I always thought, man, this would make a great anime. And then years after like the, you know, the anime bubble burst and everything, they decided to make a Codebreaker anime. Oh, that's so cool! And then I ended up playing the main character in that. <laughs> I, I'm still so hard on myself on that one because it's like, um, the fandom is like, I'm like, excuse me, you know, uh, the Japanese did it this way, why did you do it this way? I'm like, shut up, that's me. <laughs> um, and uh, recently, uh, there was a show that was on Netflix uh, called Noragami. Oh, yeah. Um, that I just, I fell in love with. And I didn't want to fall in love with it because it was so good. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be in it. And so when the auditions came around, I was like, I need be in this. If I don't be in this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so I got to, I got to voice uh, Yukine, and we're gonna be premiering it here. So nice. I'm, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm really scared. I'm a huge fan of that show, so I'm really excited. I hope I don't disappoint. You will. No, you won't. <laughs> you will. You will. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Disappointed. Yeah. No, it's okay. My mom's disappointed. <laughs> No. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> she actually, uh, she's my mom's a big fan. I'm sorry if I just keep. Oh, no, no, no. This is your. Uh, if uh, my mom is a big fan of Wolf Children, has anyone seen? Oh, yeah. That? Yeah. She bought six copies of the movie <laughs> because she kept giving it out to people. She bought one and she's like, Oh, this is really good. Oh, you've never seen Wolf Children. Oh, you need to watch this. So she kept handing it out, buying more. I'm like. <laughs> I can do it. But, I mean, thank you for supporting the industry, I guess. Um, but I remember we had a conversation where she called me up. She's like, man, I really like the movie. I just wanted to let you know I really related with Hana. You know, as a mother, I really connected. And it's like, you know, you, won't, you like to hear that. And then she puts my dad on the phone. He's like, oh, man, that, he doesn't watch anime. He's not really a big anime fan. But he's like, oh, that was a pretty good movie. The story's really good. But at the end where Ame, like, just leaves, and you just leave your mother, and no, she went from Ame to you, <laughs> and you just leave your mother in the parking lot, and you just never return, and you just never visit, I'm like, whoa, dad, <laughs> do you, you want to talk about this? <laughs> you need to talk about something? Because I don't have much time. You know, these minutes are not very long, and our family's fine. Calm down. <laughs> but yeah, Good times. Uh, actors are pawns. We are uh, directed, we are herded, we're sheep, you know, we're herded and, and told where to go. Um, rarely, I don't think there's ever been a time where I got to choose which character I voiced. Um, maybe when you were doing like small bit parts, like, mm -hmm. in this crowd, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the guy who's bald, since you're never bald? I'm like, sure. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I, I don't think we've ever had that opportunity. But I will say sometimes casting is very easy for the director. It's like, right. this guy has a ponytail. <laughs> Let's go to Micah. <laughs> I will say, uh, my fiance and I have played twins on multiple occasions yeah. because they're creepy that way. I, <laughs> uh, we played twins in Shauna. They were kind of incesty and it was kind of weird and awkward. Mm -hmm. um, we played twins in Dead Man Wonderland and they were cool. I wish they were back. <laughs> but yeah. I was inspired by uh, Scott McNeil because I grew up watching Beast Wars and his work in that was fantastic in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, he really inspired me to become a voice actor, uh, but as far as like emulating, I think the only actor that's really made me think I want I want my voice to sound like his is Jason Liebrecht. Uh He was Shaoran in Subasa, uh, Hey in Darker Than Black, um, Yato in Norgo. Um Yeah, his voice. I'm just like I want to sound like that. I want to sound like that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, does does like my appreciation for art get in the way sometimes yeah. of, of my acting? Yeah, there are moments where I'm like, what are you, that is not how you draw a hand. <laughs> that is not how perspective works. You clearly have never seen a woman before. <laughs> you know, there there are times where it gets in the way, but I mean, you just grin and bear it. I will say there are t there were moments where I was working on my web, web, my web comic at the same time, and I had a deadline where it's like, oh man, I need to upload this tomorrow, and my session is, so if I don't sleep, uh, and I know every anime fan thinks, oh man, I want to be a mangaka and a voice actor at the same time. It's perfect. I can just bring my manga pages to the studio. You can't. There are times I was sorely tempted. <laughs> Thank you. Another question? Sure. John. Is there differences between voice acting for an anime and voice acting for a video game? Um, yeah, actually, there are differences. Um, it depends on the video game. Uh, if it's a Japanese released video game, uh, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll have the Japanese audio and they'll just like speed through. And so once you hear what they say, you kind of match the timing and the emotion at the same time or after. We call it a peat and a repeat. Um, so they'll peat and we'll repeat. Um, and so uh, in those cases, it's kind of like dubbing, just with no animation. You just sort of do it based on the audio. Um, but for original projects, like um, I did a game called Centipede Infestation, Atari's reboot of Centipede. Mm -hmm. um, I know. <laughs> Atari. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was really cool because we got to, I got to act alongside other actors in the booth. We created the characters ourselves. Um, I did that a couple of times for animation as well, original animation. Uh, just forming the characters ourselves without having to match flaps. It's pretty free. Um, but there are moments where uh, if you get stuck on a line, it's like, I wish I had a reference for this. <laughs> but yeah, very different, very different. I love both. All. Everything. I love everything. Do you basically, uh, when you're doing the voice acting for anime, do you, are you by yourself? Yes. Uh, when we dub anime, because we have to match flaps, it's more uh, efficient for us to do it by ourselves. Because if you have two people in the booth trying to match flaps and one screws up, you have to do take all over. Or if we're doing things, especially with volume, uh, say if we're doing a fight scene, having two people yell at the same time would blow the microphone out. So uh, it's just it's more efficient, more cost effective to just do one at a time. Uh, that way we can get precise reads for each actor, for each character. Yeah, because now we want to see the exactly. Right? Like, <laughs> oh, let's, let's, let's get I, that guy out of here. Yes, I can actually keep going. So, sure, please. Uh, I've I've always wondered. When you do have to scream into the microphone, yes. because there's a lot of screaming going on, uh, <laughs> do you have to, I mean, do you give it all you got in there and then you just back off and, and try to project or, or do you hold back? I mean, like how do you... technique? Yes, right? exactly. Um, in general, you don't want to scream so loud that it just doesn't sound good. You know, if you just go, nah, sounds silly. <laughs> um, you want to make it sound like an anime yell, you know, a specific type of yell. If you've watched any sort of like, uh, I mean, I hate to pick on them, but here we go, um, any Ghibli dub, mm. you know, actors who do live action acting never have to do things like, <laughs> that's specifically to anime. Power up yells, things like that, that's specific to anime. So um, live action actors usually struggle with those sorts of things or just don't know, you know, or do something different. Whereas uh, 
anime voice actors, you know, we hear we hear that and we're like, oh, we totally know what we're doing. Yeah, we get that. A lot of times we have new talent who come in from radio or stage and they do it and they are confused. We're like, no, 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 no. Ah! Uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Huh? <laughs> so things like that. Uh, with with yelling, you need you need to project enough to make it sound good, but not so much that it just sounds like you're making noise or mating calls. <laughs> yeah, as you do. Um, it depends on the show and it depends on the character. If I'm playing a lead character, um, especially with these broadcast dubs that we're doing, um, you guys are aware of the broadcast dubs. We, we dub things as they come out in Japan without having to wait like six to eight months or a year for the release. Um, it's good to, to have a, a feel for the show and the character ahead of time. Um, in the past, I used to go and sort of blind and just talk with the director to see what he wanted to go with it, and then watch afterwards to see uh, like where we could meet up halfway and stuff like that. But it depends. Um, uh, also, it depends on if the character is a deep voice character, uh, the warm-ups that I do, uh, the songs that I sing on the way to work <laughs> change depending on which character that I'm playing. So. Yeah. I guess I really admire cosplayers because that's something I could never do. I like to draw, I'm really bad at crafts, so whenever I see the mad props that people bring out, like people who bring the Soul Eater uh, scythe yeah. from the show, I'm like, how did you do that? I would just not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be that, definitely. So that impressed me quite a bit. And have you ever drawn together before? I've drawn my characters before, yeah. I Because apparently the fans like it when I do that. They're like, can you draw a soul from Soul Eater? I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> uh, I've actually become really good at drawing soul. I uh, we I was at a convention and they had like these big, big rolls of paper out, and you, you could donate to charity for a marker to draw on it. So it was like, you know, twenty five cents you get a marker, a dollar you get four or whatever, you know. And so I was like, sure, why not? So I go over there, I start drawing. People start coming around and drawing too. And <laughs> this one person looks up, and they're like, oh, that's a really good soul. Thank you. I've had a lot of practice drawing him. And so I finish it and I, I sign it and I I, um, I take a picture and I'm about to walk off and they look up and they're like, <laughs> 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 the voice? That is the voice of soul! I'm like, yeah, believe it. And I just walk that way. <laughs> yeah. With cosplay, have you ever stopped to take a picture of someone dressed as somebody you voice? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Usually, I mean, I if it's for a character that I really like, then I'll go out of my way to, uh, to take a picture with them. But most of the time, it's when my character hasn't been announced yet, and I just want to be sneaky for my own gratification <laughs> because I can't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, uh, hey, the Norgon cosplayer, can I uh, take a picture with you? And they're like, who's this creepy little dude? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And so they take a picture with me, and then afterwards, like months later on Twitter, they'll be like, oh! Oh my god, you took a picture with me and ha ha ha! Like, that is English, yes. <laughs> that is accurate. Yes, I didn't do that. Congratulations. <laughs> you were the first, were yeah. you? From your Twitter, it says you're busy making up voice acting tips. Um, would you care to share a few of like the favorite ones that you've come up with? Uh, yes. Uh, when you're in the booth, make sure you punch the microphone because sound engineers love it when you do that. <laughs> uh, don't be afraid to tell the director, no, I don't want to do that because that will get you more work. Um, and make sure that you enter the building in the creepiest way possible. For example, uh, holding a jar of uh, mayonnaise, but with pudding inside it, and just like eating from it <laughs> with a big spoon. That's how you will become a famous voice actor on the internet. I've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, what My life is a lot. I'm yeah. quitting xgeek.com. <laughs> I have a new career path. Yeah, <laughs> Folks, please join me in thanking Micah for taking time out of the we need more time. Thank you guys. You can feel free. Just around. <laughs> <laughs>